please stand for the procession of the family. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what's been planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to sow and a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time of love, a time of peace. To everything under the sun, there is a time and a season. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings thou shalt take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrows that flyeth at noonday. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Because he has set his love upon me, saith the Lord, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he have known my name. I will deliver him and honor him and show him my salvation. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me, he must come believing that I am, and I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. These all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. For when this earthly house, this tabernacle had been dissolved, we have another building, a building not made with hands, but one which is eternal in the heavens. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha 
and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. You may be seated. Let us open with a word of prayer. Most eternal God, our Father, King of glory, right now we come in a moment of grief, but your word have let us know that you, blessed Holy Spirit, will be a comforter. And so in this very moment, at this very hour, Blessed Holy Spirit, we'd ask that you would rain down in this place. Let your glory move from heart to heart and breast to breast. Lord, even though we are weeping, let us celebrate the life that was lived. And then, God, when morning comes, let us find the joy that you promised. But in these moments, let us Ascribe to your word and let us seek the Lord while he may be found. We pray this in all prayers and the blessings and in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let us all say amen. Amen. We are here to celebrate the life of Craig Jones. Amen. Born February the 22nd, 1962. And went home to be with the Lord on February the 2nd, 2024, a few days short of his birthday. And so can we give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. Even though we are grieving, amen, God has still been a faithful and a good God. Amen. And so we will follow the order of the service and we will have the opening hymn by Minister Lisa Reed Williamson. Uh, Following that, it will be um, Old Testament by Pastor Stephanie Palem. Amen. New Testament by uh, Pastor Sonia Thomas and Prayer of Comfort by uh, Pastor Calvin Page. We'll proceed in that order. If you want to know where I'm going, where I am going soon, if anybody asks you where I'm going, where I am going, I'm going up yonder I'm going up yonder I'm going up yonder To be with my Lord Oh, I'm going up yonder I'm going up yonder Sorrow it brings the comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone as God gives me grace. I'll run this race. 
until I see my Savior face to face. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I can take the pain, the sorrow it brings, the comfort in knowing I'll soon be gone. As God gives me grace. I run this race until I see my Savior face to face. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh. Amen. Praise the Lord. I apologize. There is a change or correction to the program. The um, Old Testament will be read by Dr. Morris Randall. Amen. But we that come on behalf of this family ought to be able to give God some praise in the house. Amen. Amen. Our loved one went through something. Amen. But the battle is over. Amen. He is now. Amen. With the Lord. Amen. And they say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so I chose Psalms 27 today to let you know that the Lord is my light. And so this is a psalm of David when he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his trevine. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When you say, seek my faith, my heart said to you, my faith, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O oh God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, 
then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of thine enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such had breathed out violence, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Family, family, wait on the Lord. Y'all be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. And David said it with more expressions when he got to the end. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. You all are a part of me. And I am a part of you. And we are a family. I love you all dearly. Praise the Lord. To the family, Miss Jean, to the daughters, the siblings, Evelyn, and to the entire Jones family. Look to the hills from whence come of your help and know that your help cometh from the Lord. I will be reading in your hearing on today, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses six through eight. And here we find these words. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all that also love his appearing. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. God bless you all. Let us bow. Eternal and all wise God, our Father, it's once again that we come to say thank you. We come in the midst of this hour of sorrow and agony and pain, looking unto you, O oh God, because you are so awesome. We lift up these daughters, we lift up this mother, we lift up these siblings. We lift up this entire family right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, we invoke now your power and your presence. For you're the God of all comfort. You're the God of all consolation. You're the God, oh God, that look beyond all of our fault and see our need. Lord, even at this hour, oh God, that you ask that you would come in uh, this afternoon and lift up a bow down head. Oh God, spirit of the living God, come on in, oh God, and wipe the tears from our eyes. And oh God, we ask this, this afternoon, God, that you would strengthen each one right now. Family, friends, and all those who have assembled here, oh God, at this hour, oh God, for your word declare weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come again in the morning light. So, Lord, we just thank you for our dear brother, oh God, brother Craig, and how, oh God, you watched over him down through the years, oh God, and, oh God, at this very present hour, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Somebody help me lift Jesus at this hour that, oh God, the family might be encouraged, that the family might be comforted, that the family might be strengthened at this hour. Oh, Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. Now, Lord, remember the man of God that will stand to bring words of comfort and consolation for this family. Oh, God, strengthen him afresh. Oh, God, come on in, King Jesus, and have thine own way. 
Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this afternoon, oh God. And Lord, there might be somebody that don't know you in the pardon of their sin. But Lord, even at this hour, God, we ask, oh God, that you would come knock on our hearts, oh God, and open our eyes that we will hear. And open, open our ears that we will hear and open our eyes, oh God, that we will see that there's a God in heaven there's a God that, that will forgive us and a God that will save us a God that will deliver us and Lord we'll give you all the praise and in the days ahead God we ask that you would be with these daughters be with this mother be with these siblings oh God in the name of Jesus and we'll give your name all of the praise we'll give your name all of the glory and all the honor it is in the name of the Father it is in the name of the Son. It's the name of the Holy Spirit that we pray in Jesus' name. Might we all say amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We thank Dr. Randall for the Old Testament, Pastor Thomas for the New Testament, and Pastor Page for that stirring prayer of comfort. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is still on the throne, amen. It does not matter what happens in our lives, what we go through, God is still in control. Somebody that knows him say amen. amen. At this time, we'll have reflections from Mr. Marcellus uh, Snipes, Director of Operations, James City County Schools, uh, Ms. LaToria and Michelle Jones, the daughters, Mr. Willie Matthews, best friend and co-worker, and then um, from Pastor Stephanie Palem, his sister. Following that, we'll have acknowledgments from Sister Cynthia Sylvester, and we'll proceed in that order. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. I say it all because sometimes you just don't know where you're coming or when you're going. Um, and I say that um, in all sincerity. I wrote some things down, even though um, I'm not, I'm saying it from the heart, even though I wrote it down. Um, I also want to acknowledge that there are, with this family in the house, there's other family in the house. It's the family of Williamsburg James City County Schools. And we have some individuals here today that have come to pay their respects. And I would like to acknowledge Ms. Melody Hunley, Ms. Channing Wynn, Ms. Latonya Baudier, Nick Baudier. Willie, who was also a member of WJCC, and the superintendent of schools, Dr. Owen Harris. As you look at a birth date and a death date, there's a dash right in the middle. And that's what this life is. It really is a dash. And that reminds me of a poem by Linda Ellis. If you get a chance, read it. Um, Today, we gather here to pay our respects and bid farewell to our beloved team member, Craig Jones, whose departure from this world leaves a void, not only in our professional lives, but in our hearts as well. He was more than just a coworker at WJCC schools. He was an educator, believe it or not, because students looked at him and said, wow, if he can do that job with dignity, if he can do this job well, if he can be loyal, if he can be honest, he can have integrity, don't we all want to be like that? He was a true friend to many. Came, Craig came to us in 2006 as a sub and then joined our team permanently in 2008. He quickly became an integral part of our custodial team at DJ, at Berkeley, and eventually a head custodian at Lafayette. And a few years later, he even convinced his daughter, Latoria, to join us. People may look at Craig and say, oh, he was a jan janitor, insinuating no value. However, we know that a custodian has value. If you want evidence of their value, have a restroom stall without toilet paper. Yeah, people get mad when there's no copy paper. You run out of copy paper, but let there be no hand soap, paper towels, or toilet paper. See, the dictionary defines value as the importance or worth of something or someone. Values are things we achieve and possess. Achieve them by how we make people feel. We possess, possess values by demonstrating character and integrity. I would argue that he was not just a janitor, but he was a custodian. He was, in fact, the synonym of a custodian. He was a caretaker. The synonym for a valued person are admired, cherished, dear, esteemed, favorite, hallowed, loved, popular, 
prized, respected, revered, venerated, and treasured. And I think everyone in here can say that they felt that way about Craig. We honor him with our presence, and although I would never give him credit for the Cowboys being a Super Bowl contender <laughs> and Dak being an elite MVP quarterback, Craig was an MVP for our team. I acknowledge his value to our organization and our team and to me personally by telling you that he was not only a family member, but we will also miss him. As we stand here today, our esteemed friends and coworkers from Lafayette and from Operations, it's hard to imagine our workplace without Craig. His absence will be deeply felt, but the memories we share will continue to live on. To Craig's family, we extend our deepest condolences. Please know that he spoke of you often with great pride and love. The legacy of love and values he cherished will always remain with you. In closing, let us honor, our, honor his memory by embodying the qualities he exemplified. Let us strive to be compassionate, to lead with purpose, to face challenges with courage, and to find joy in our daily lives. Craig, your spirit will forever resonate in the corridors of Lafayette High School and in our hearts. Thank you, Craig. May you rest in peace, knowing you have made an immeasurable impact on our lives. And from a Washington fan, I'll say it. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, uh, first of all, good afternoon. And I want to give an honor to God because he's given me the strength to be up here. All right. Um, my sister and I want to shed some light on what kind of man our father was. Our father was a good man. He was a strong and very hardworking man. He was a proud Marine, and he was about family. He taught my sister and I, and even his grandson, to trust in God and to never give up and to face no matter what we're going through head on. We just want to say to our Father, we love you, we miss you, and until we see each other again, we're going to do our best to keep making you and Mom proud. We love you, Dad, and thank you for all the life lessons you taught us. Love your daughters. Thank you. Um, we just received a note that there are two vehicles that need to be removed. One is a black Cadillac with the license plate S-N-A-K-E-A. -A. The other is a Mercedes license plate UDJ 9146. Amen. And um, at this time, Mr. Willie Matthews will come and will proceed in the order of the program. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, it's an honor and a privilege to stand here today to pay respects to a dear friend of mine, ex-coworker, who I considered a dear brother. We met over 25 years ago on the job, and he was my maintenance supervisor starting on the job. And you know, going into the new maintenance field, it was different things that I didn't know. So basically, he was showing me different things, what I need to do, this, that, that, and the third. So as I started taking classes on it, the instructor said, well, whatever you were saying is not right. But in the end, everything came back to what it needed to be done in the beginning. So... I thank this man for everything that he taught me because now in my current position in my job, I got a basically a promotion last year. And when I got that promotion, I called him and I said, Craig, I finally got that position. And he said, did you? I said, yes, I did. So, and from then on, you know, it, it was just a life journey on and on and on. But, you know, I'm not here today to just stand up and go through the whole spiel because I got just a little something to say because I know, you know, the time is getting late in the evening and usually when you get up in the evening, it's be like, uh, I'm not going to be before you long. Usually what the pastor said, I'm not going to be before you long. Not knocking anybody, but, 
but, but I just want to get the message through. And sometimes everybody looking at their clocks and watches, and it's another hour and a half later, and we ain't got that message yet. So, <laughs> so anyway, I came up with a little thing that I would like to just say for my friend, my dear friend, my brother, and then the uh, title of this is Celebration of Life. We are here to celebrate your life and the measures of its worth and every single life that you touch while you were here on earth. Everyone wished to pay their respects. That's why we're here today. That's why you're my, hold on, <clears throat> hold on. Thank you for our friendship and all the memories that we share. Until we meet again, my brothers, so dear. And this is from me, Will, to Sergeant Craig E. Jones, United States Marine Corps, simplified, do or die. Hoorah! <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. As you know, Craig was my brother. He's my oldest brother. I'm right behind Craig. And I'm telling you, I love my brother. Even though we fought, but he was letting me know he was in charge. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Craig's life was filled with dedication and commitment to friends and family. He strived to make the world a better place for anyone. If you all know Craig, Craig had a busy life, but he would take the time out to see what it is that you needed. I don't care how busy he was, whatever he had to do, he would stop and take the time. Might not get to you that same day, but he'll make sure he come by, check on you, make sure you're okay. He would even pick up the phone sometime and call and say, girl, you all right? I miss you, sis. I miss you, bro. But to say this, because I know it's going to get choked up, Craig lived a true life. His testimony, he was so brave, and he, commit, he was committed to whatever duty that he was called to do. After serving his country and his honor, he continued to make a lasting impact within the community as far as being an educator at the school system, which was James which was in James City County school system. But Craig made more than a dedication, became more than a dedicated worker. He was a beloved father, a brother, a son, always prioritizing his family. He loved his loving Evelyn. He loved Evelyn. I don't care what you say. He loved some Evelyn. And Evelyn was good to Craig and she was good to her kids. She treated those kids as if as though they were her own. So, Anna, Evelyn, we want to say thank you for sticking beside our brother. Amen. Everyone that knew Craig, he was kind. He was compassionate, even including his daughter. They was very kind and compassionate. They, they had that, his spirit. They had his spirit always meek and mild. But he also loved his grandson, Amari Jenkins. And he cherished his uncles, his aunts, his nieces. Craig was always there. So all I want to say is this. I'm speaking on the behalf of the family. That Craig, we love you. We're going to miss you. But ain't no more to say, what's up, girl? What y'all going to do? I miss my brother. Even though I haven't been here for him, but he would pick up that phone and he would call me and say, girl, you okay? So we know how Craig was. We love you, Craig. We're going to miss you. I have to say. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Chickahominy Community Improvement Organization. Linda Wallace Cody, President. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I, not, would I have told you that I would go to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. February 9th, 2024, to Jean Jones and family. On behalf of the Chicken Harmony Community Improvement Organization, we would like to express our deepest sympathy to you and your family for the loss of your loved one. The loss of a child is a pain that no words or actions can heal. Craig's light touched so many lives and will continue to shine in our hearts. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Craig, has all, Craig was always there for our neighborhood reunions and Chickahominy Day. He did not have much to say, but his presence let us know he enjoyed every minute of the neighborhood crew. On rare occasions, we will find him laughing and chuckling with his closest friends. Craig made, for, Craig made time for his family and friends when they needed him most. Craig will be truly missed in our neighborhood and community. Hold on to the memories and be encouraged that if we keep our minds on God, he will renew your strength. Sincerely, Linda Wallace Cody, Linda Wallace Cody, Chickahominy Community Improvement Organization. Mount Nemo Baptist Church. Reverend Calvin L. Page, pastor. Sister Beatrice Lightfoot, church clerk. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, verse 4. To the family of Mr. Craig Edwin Jones, the Mount Nebo, Mount Nebo Baptist Church family are extending our heartfelt sympathy to you on the passing of your son, father, brother, grandfather, nephew, and uncle. May the love, prayers, and the support of your family and friends bring you comfort during this difficult time. While it may not feel this way now, but your incredible strength will guide you through your grief as you mourn the loss of your loved one. If we could find anyone to, if we could find a way to take your pain, we would move heaven and earth to do so. This is our greatest wish at this time for you. We would like to leave the scripture of promise with the family. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. John chapter 14, verses 25 to 26. To the family, may God's hope-filled promise bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart. With our deepest sympathy, Mount Nebo Baptist Church of Barhamsville, Virginia, Reverend Kevin L. Page, pastor, Sister Beatrice Lightfoot, church clerk. At this time, we'll have the um, hymn of comfort by Minister Lisa Reed Williamson, and following that will be the message of inspiration.
find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. You stole my thunder. I'll only be before you a little while. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Humor always brings a little levity to the moment. Amen. Um, but if, if you don't mind, I just want to share a few words with you as the family requested. Uh, Craig and I, we were, we were acquaintances. Amen. We didn't hang out, but we knew each other. And we shared a mutual respect. He and my wife, they became real good friends during their time that they worked together at Berkeley. And from time to time, I would stop in and we would just talk for a while and Craig and I we could we could share space and I don't know if you understand how important that is to have people you can share space with because he he could have a good conversation you see Craig is part of a dying breed Craig is what I call old school brother the young boys, when they look at folks like Craig and myself, 
they called us the OGs. Amen. That's a term of respect. Craig was an everyday, hardworking, respectful, down-to-earth brother. He said what he had to say, and he kept it moving. He lived his life on his own terms. He was a good friend. He had a good heart, and he liked to have a good time. And you know what? You would be amazed to discover the people who you share common interests and values and life experiences with if you would just give yourself the privilege to be your authentic self. You would be amazed at the people that you have a common thread in life with. You know, church, life is real fleeting. Time passes so quickly for you not to live in the moment and experience the things that bring you joy. And man, this is about as loud as I'm going to get. I feel so sad for the people that I see who are living in their cell phones because they are missing so much of life. And there's just a couple of verses, amen, in the book of James, the fourth chapter, that they really keep me grounded in this thing called life. James said, come now and pay attention to this. You who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and carry on our business and make a profit. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen in your life tomorrow. What is secure in your life? You are merely a vapor like a puff of smoke or a wisp of steam from a cooking pot, it is visible for a little while and then vanishes into thin air. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and we would do this or we would do that. Somebody say amen. amen. A few weeks ago, one of my sons called me. And I could tell he just had a few things on his mind. I said, yo, what's up, my dude? And he said, yo, pops. Life be life and man. And I listened intently. Then transparently, I began to share the commonalities of my experiences as his dad with him. I encouraged his heart. And all the while, I was praying for my son. Because when everything's said and done, no matter who you are, life be life and and when life begins to take those unexpected twists, your position is not even relevant. When life begins to life, your money doesn't matter. Where you live doesn't matter. And who you have connections with doesn't matter. Because life happens in the, in the um, custodian's closet. Life happens in the lunchroom, in the classroom, in the principal's office, and in the administrative offices. And even the prim and proper can relate to the inaccurate grammar used in the statement, life be life in. Amen. Because you can feel that, especially if you're going through something. Last Tuesday evening, January the 30th, I stopped by the hospital to see Craig. The day prior, he received news that his um, cancer was terminal and there was nothing else they could do. And during the visit, he was very reflective on life and he was lucid as it pertained to what he was facing. He knew, amen, what he was dealing with. And much of the conversation was, was very private and I'll keep that to myself. However, there, there are a couple of things I feel compelled to share. Craig told me about his love for high-performance cars. He mentioned a car, a Dodge something or the other. I'm not into cars, but man, when he talked about this Dodge, this brother lit up. And he said, he said you know, Reverend, I, I thought about buying this car last year. Now look at me. Rev, I should have brought that car. 
Now, I don't know about you, but everybody I encounter, I can learn something from. And when he said to me, Rev, I should have brought that car, I heard, you better live your life to the fullest of its potential. Then he made a statement, a statement that opened the doorway to a conversation that I really wanted to have. He said, you know, Rev, it's in the Lord's hands now. To which I quickly replied, yes, my brother, it is. It is in the Lord's hands. Question is, are you in the Lord's hands? Craig said to me, he said, another preacher stopped by today. He told me we can talk about that stuff tomorrow. And I was astonished to hear that. But I told Craig, I said, my brother, the news that you received, there's no assurance that you have tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I haven't received any news and there's no assurance I have tomorrow. Amen. So we walked through the plan of salvation. Amen. He checked every box and he told me, he said, Pastor, I've always believed that. But nobody's just ever laid it out that plainly. And in that moment, I could see the assurance of his spirit man, uh, of of his eternal salvation. As, As we shared the gospel of Jesus Christ, I could see in his eyes that he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that no matter what happened from that moment forward, he had an eternal home in heaven. Somebody ought to say amen. And so I shared with him this parable that Jesus told, and and I'll read it, and I promise you, I I will not be before you long. (laughs) In Matthew 20, Jesus said, for the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out in the morning at the dawn and hired workmen for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for the denarius for the day's work, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out again at about the third hour, 9 a.m., and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, you also go into my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right, an approximate wage. And they went. He went out again about the sixth hour at about noon, and he went out on the ninth hour at about 3 p.m., and did the same thing, hiring laborers. And about the 11th hour at 5 p.m., he went out and found others standing around. He said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They answered him because no one has hired us. He told them, well, you go into my vineyard also. So when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last to be hired and ending with the first to be hired. Amen. Those who had been hired at the 11th hour at 5 p.m. came and received a day's wage. Now, when the first to be hired came, they thought they would get more. But each of them also received a day's wage. When they received it, they protested and grumbled at the owner of the estate, saying, These men who came last worked only one hour, and yet you have made them equal in wage to us who have carried most of the burden and worked in the scorching heat of the day. But the owner of the estate replied to to one of them, Friend, am I doing you any injustice? Did you not agree with me for this day's wage? Take what belongs to you and go. But I choose to give to the last man hired the same as I gave to you. Am I not lawfully permitted to do what I choose with what is mine? Or is your eye envious because I am generous? So those who were last in this world should be first in the world to come. And those who were first shall be made last. And as I shared the plan of salvation with Craig, I began to tell him about the fact that that the only thing that would separate any man or woman is whether they accept Jesus Christ or not. It does not matter how long you've been saved. It does not matter how long you've served in the church. It does not even matter how long our pastor. When a man or woman receives Jesus Christ as their personal Lord or Savior, they gain entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know for some of the church folk, they don't think it's fair because how can he get the same thing that I got? Well, you need to go talk to the boss because he's the one who decided on what wage everybody ought to receive. Somebody say amen. And so... A couple days later, after visiting Craig, he went home. And on Friday morning, February the 2nd, Sharon called, and she told me that Craig's condition had worsened. And so I went by the house, and we spent time with him. And and for a little while, he was a little agitated. But it seemed like the more time that the family spent with him and the more that prayer was being offered, his spirit just settled. You see, beloved, God promises to give you peace. 
And I wish, I wish, I wish down in the depths of my soul that people could really understand how much God loves them. Because I know that if you understood how much he loved you, it would be no doubt in your mind that you would serve him because there is no love greater than the love that God has for us. For the Bible says that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. And when Craig settled in that bed, he knew that he had eternal life. None of us are going to live forever. However, while we're here, the Lord has given us promises and assurances to those of us who accept Jesus Christ in our heart. I left the house, and within three minutes, my phone rang. It was Sharon. Pastor, Craig is gone. I just walked out the door within three minutes. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen in your life tomorrow. What is secure in your life? You're merely a vapor, like a puff of smoke or a wisp of steam from a cooking pot, visible for a little while, then vanishes into thin air. Craig was right. It was in the Lord's hands. I know some are here still in shock because you say, how did it happen so fast? A few weeks ago, I was laughing with Craig and talking. Life is a vapor. In another place, it says that life is like a blade of grass. It springs forth full of life in the morning But by evening, having been beaten down by the sun, it withers and is no more. It is in God's hands. But Craig is in God's hands. Can I ask you a question? Whose hands are you in? Allstate Insurance Company claims to be the good hands people. They offer insurance. But I stand before you today under the authority of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I'm offering assurance. You need insurance to be in this place, but you need assurance to go to that place. Whose hands are you in? I know where Craig is. I left the hospital and I couldn't call Mama Jean fast enough. And I said, Miss Jean, Miss Jean, doesn't matter. Because he's saved. And we celebrate it. Because all of heaven is filled with joy when just one comes to the Lord. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth, and this is what I shared with Craig, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead because with the mouth confession is made but it's with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. The word lets us know that if we would accept him the finished work of Jesus Christ then we have a home in heaven. Is there one here today that's not accepted him? Is there one here today? God bless you. We turn it over into the hands of the director. Praise the Lord, family and friends. Oh, come on now. Praise the Lord in this house. 
I told Miss Jean earlier, and don't make a liar out of me. I told her that we were going to party in here today. We were going to celebrate. We were going to celebrate Craig's life. So come on. Praise the Lord in this house for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, I do ask that you prepare your hearts and minds to receive the United States Marine Corps Honor Guard as they pay tribute to Mr. Jones for his many, many years of dedicated service to our country. I do ask at the playing of taps, please, those of you who can and are willing to, please rest on your feet. At this time, receive the United States Marine Corps Honor Guard from Virginia Beach, Virginia.
we thank the United States Marine Corps for their tribute on today. At the request of the family, we'll do the committal here. And so we ask that everyone except for the family please stand. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelation 14, 13. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We all shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. But when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. My friends, whereas death have once more invaded our ranks and removed from the walks of life, our beloved brother, Craig Edwin Jones, his soul having departed to dwell in the undiscovered country from whom born no traveler returns. It has become our sad duty to commit his body to the grave, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and our inspiring privilege to commend his soul to our maker, father, and redeemer in the confident hope of the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the body from the grave and the joyous life reserved for the children of light in the realms of glory. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we have come to celebrate the life of Craig Jones. Father, as we leave this place, let us not leave your presence. Blessed Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of us. Let us think on those things that pertain to life. And God, if we discover that we've come up short, let us turn it all over to you in humble submission that we may, in fact, see Craig again in glory around your throne. Now want him that is able to keep all of us from falling, Present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, dominion, power, and majesty, both now and forever. And all that know him said, Amen. 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 On behalf of the family, we'd like to thank you, Apostle Hammond, other clergymen and women in attendance, and were on the pro and everybody who participated in the program to Make this occasion a little lighter for this family. Thank you and God bless you for your time and your service on today. I would also like to thank this wonderful Chickahominy, Tawano community that once again, y'all have not failed to show up for your brother, to show up for your sister, to show up for your family. It warms my heart to see y'all here and to see all the love that is in the room. Latoya, Mama, family, this place is packed. The walls are bursting out, and that's a testament of who Craig is. And the reason why I say is, is because on the day that the death certificate lies saying that he died, it's not telling the full story. It's just saying that they have put a final to that one chapter, but have started a whole new book. And the thing is, the book that Craig lived here through God 
my own daughter, she he he was the custodian at Lafayette when she was there. She remembers. She's a child. She she's the next generation. That's the one who aren't supposed to have all their mind together and just like you know la da la da la. But she remembered your son. She remembered your dad from school. So that means he made an impact. I know it said in an obituary, but the thing is, I saw where he has made an impact. And my charge to you, Latoya, because I've seen you before, and I have watched the way that you move, and I watched the way that you work. You got the same spirit as your dad. Keep it, baby. Keep it. Go forward in what he has imparted in you, what he has taught you, and who he has raised you to be. And again, I'm going to say it to you publicly because the village is who you are going to need more so after today. Don't bite off more than you can chew, baby. Be you. Be who your dad has raised you to be, has, a, has taught you to be. You don't have to be everything to everybody, especially not today and not tomorrow. When the time comes for you to get back and put your cape on, by all means, go ahead and do it. But you need healing as well. And you have given so, so much of yourself away. Even in the wake of your dad's passing, you're still giving yourself away. So I just pray for you that God would keep his hand upon you, that he would keep his arms wrapped around you and will hold you close to his heart so that you can heal, so that you can grieve, so that you can get closer to your mourning season. You're still kind of in that, in that, in that nighttime phase of grief but i just pray that your your morning that's the part that's the time when joy will start to come back into your heart my prayer is that that time will come sooner rather than later especially for your sacrifice and the thing about the god that i serve apostle i believe is the same god that you teach about all the time he is faithful to his children and if you if you want it and if you ask him for it he's going to give it to you and he's going to do it just for you amen amen family on behalf of the tire staff of whiting's funeral home it has been a great honor to stand with you during this time as a token of our appreciation, we don't take it lightly. As a token of our appreciation, I do want to present to you this memorial plaque in love and memory of Mr. Craig Edwin Jones. My prayer family is that you will receive this plaque with the same amount of love and prayer that went into creating it just for you. And Evelyn, God loves you. Don't think that he doesn't. You got a lot of questions wondering, God, why? That's fine. What you've been through, anybody with any kind of sense would ask the same question as to why. Why me? But I just say to you today, why not you? Because God has something for you as well. And the main, the main thing is seek after him. You may feel like you've lost a lot, but you ain't lost nothing nearly as much as Job has. And Job loved God more than anything in the world. But 
he was stripped of everything. He was stripped of his family. He was stripped of his business. He was stripped of his money. He was stripped of his dignity. He was stripped of his health. He was stripped of every single thing that he had. But you know what? For gold to be pure gold, all the impurities have to be stripped from it. All the impurities have to be burned away so that it can be a precious jewel. And God is molding you to be a special jewel for him. But you got to keep your eyes focused on him. Don't get caught up in the question of why. He's going to answer you in his time and in his way. But don't get caught up on the question. Get caught up with getting on back on the battlefield. Get caught up with chasing after him like you don't have any sense. Keep going after him. When people are wondering, why are you still standing? Why aren't you cursing that guy? <clears throat> why have you taken your own life? Don't worry about it. Let them keep thinking why you still have a smile on your face. Let them continue to wonder why you still chase after, after God so that maybe they can find some Jesus themselves. There's a song that says, you may be the only Jesus that people will ever see. Amen. So just be, be encouraged. We love you. I'm just, I'm just giving you what the Lord has, has to say to you on today. Amen. Amen. If we all can stand to our feet. This does conclude the homegoing celebration for of the dear life of Craig Edwin Jones. May God bless you on this.